Good morning, good morning. This is Spirit Journey, and today is July 3rd, 2019, and it is now 9.48 a.m. I want to do a, a quick video before I forget. I was watching this one YouTuber who's, who studies about alternative history. And as he's talking, a thought comes into my mind about some of the things he's talking about with this alternative uh, history as it pertains to the Bible. Now, some of you may not know, I used to be a devout Christian. I was a Christian, um, I would say 98% of my adult life. It was around maybe two years ago, two or three years ago, that I officially denounced Christianity. However, this video is not about slam dunking those people who are Christians, who are honest, uh, law-abiding citizens that you wish well for people, you do good to people. I'm not, it's not about that, about that trashing those people. But I just want to share with you some of the things that came upon my mind as it pertains to people who are leaving traditional religion. It's not about Christianity per se. It's about any large institution. And religion is one of those institutions. And there are many religions. So I want to talk about some of the things to be wary of. Now, when I was in the military, I used to be in the United States Navy, and at one time, uh, initially I was being pulled away from Christianity. A person that I met planted a seed of doubt, and with that seed, like, um, the, the, it seems like the main thing with when you're being lured away from religion, that about sexual behavior, sexual activity, sex out of marriage specifically I'm, I'm going to refer to. Now we're, we're told in the, in the, you know, to be a Christian or, and I think most religions that having sex out of marriage is a sin and you can go to hell for it. And so that's a biggie and I knew I didn't want to go to hell. I, um, I, I was conservative but even more so for someone to say, hey, if you, it's like when you tell someone not to do something, and they may not even have a desire to do a particular thing, but when you tell them don't do something that they're not doing, and sometimes it's like the, the temptation all of a sudden pops in, you know? So I, so I had an initial temptation at that time in the military. But I, I thought about it. I was getting, going through a lot of confusion. There were a lot, of, a lot of things going on in the military. And I did talk to a Christian woman about it. And she said, you weren't confused before, and God is not a God of confusion. Now, I am grateful for that Christian woman. And, and, and she, I think she was an authentic Christian woman. She was a goodly person. And very intelligent. And she, she was real brief, and that's basically all she said. No big, big thing, you know, no, no long dialogue. That was all she said. And it put me, it, it settled my mind, and I continue on in my military stay. And I fast forward almost 30 years later. Now, I how do you say this? Now, I, as I said, about three years ago, I officially denounced Christianity. And I, want, I, I remembered about my stay in the military. And I, like, it's, like, it's like a big burden off when you're not being controlled by an institution, whether it be religion or a club or a, a job even. So I, I want to warn people there. Like I'm, I, I call my channel Spirit Journey. Yes, I am on a journey. And this journey is, could be a slippery slope. And it, 
it could initially produce anger inside of you. And sometimes when you get angry, you may want to do things that you wouldn't normally do, you know? And going out there sexually is one of those things that could happen. So I, so I want to warn people out there who, whatever what denomination, religion, or lifestyle that you're in, and then you want to break away from it, be worried about the, that temptation because it seems like your, your body is a, can be a, a tool for temptation for others out there who prey on people who are switching systems. So it's that borderline between the black and the white. So it's that, that gray zone, and it's in that gray zone that you have people who want to exploit your weaknesses or that transitional period. So I would say, be by yourself. Be in prayer or meditation, uh, but to be around people, you know, be cautious around who you're going to be around at this time. And there was something else that I wanted to say regarding, uh, you know, experimenting with with sex or experimenting with drugs that's another thing drugs and sex they go hand in hand <laughs> in that that uh in between zone you know when you're transitioning in, you know mentally or spiritually i i wanted to share this that how to say this now <laughs> i i can't stand when i start to forget what i'm saying um let me get my thoughts okay yes regarding the Bible. Now, I, what I, when I'm believing to think right now, like the Bible, and, then, and I think other, other religious material, that sex seems to be guarded. And I ask myself, why is that? Out of something, because I believe that the Bible is man-made. And it was, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, I wasn't born back there then 6,000, 3,000 years ago, but it's just my perception about the scriptures, that it was presented for a reason. And again, this YouTuber that prompted me, you know, to do this video, I mean, what he was saying prompted me to want to do this video. And I, I said to myself, now, it's a control mechanism. It's to have you be controlled. And so if you're with all these different people, and let's say if the story about Enki and Anlil, you know, the Samaritan tablets, let's just suppose that that is true. Now, these people had to control about one's DNA. Because they were tapping into our DNA for their purpose. And so they want to know who's who. And even in the Bible, I think it's um, Genesis 6, chapter 6. See that 6-6? Six, six? That they were manipulating our DNA. So they, if, if you're a scientist and you are a geneticist specialist, and if you know that you could, you could manipulate a being and also the way they think through the genetics. So you have to tap into that DNA and know what's in it. But if other people are involved sexually with each other, you don't know what DNA they have. Right? So they, forbade, so they pass laws of control, laws of control to make you, to, to penalize you for getting sexually involved with someone and then again you might get pregnant and so if you get pregnant that DNA you, you're not able to control it. it. You already spilled someone else's DNA in you. 
And it seems like the people in power are people who share the genetics of these supposedly Enki, Anlil, the, the people who colonize uh, the, what they call the Middle East, or what they call Mesopotamia. They came in there and what they call civilization. Civilization just means control. And I think specifically is the Anunnaki control. So civilization doesn't mean superior. It means that it is a foreign entity imposed upon the people of this planet who are indigenous of this planet. And if you're not in line with these intruders to this planet, you're considered then uncivilized. So you can say unadulterated with that other foreign DNA. See that, that see our DNA is programmed to do what it does. And it's harder for them to control us. And I think the whole awakening process is really about awakening to these a true aliens, true aliens that are controlling our DNA. This other YouTuber talked about how our genetics, I, I forget the term, uh, edamers or something like that. There, there are these things that are attached to our second chromosome and and in shorten as time goes on. And it's what limits our li lifespan. That's what's happening. They didn't want us to live longer. Our biological suits, according to some of the literature out there on what's happening in Mesopotamia, was to genetically modify us and to dumb us down, even in the Bible. Look in the Bible, in Genesis, how we used to live, according to scriptures, 800 years, 900 years. And as time went on, it got shorter and shorter because the system, the outsiders, interfered with people. So they're not your friends, but they put their so-called friends in positions of power. And it explains why, if you look in American history, who they use to become presidents. They're all related. They're all related. And that's why they don't like so-called minorities. That's why they don't like so-called the black person, the African, or the indigenous people of Australia, or the indigenous people of the Americas. You notice there's always people from the Eurasia regions of the world, the ancient Eurasia. It's like they just popped out of nowhere, this particular race of people. They look very different from everybody else, but it seems like those people who are more mixed with those Eurasia people are the ones that they select to be in power, to become presidents, prime ministers, even some religious figures, right? So that's what this video is about. It's about awakening to really start asking questions why we're told in certain institutions such as religion, why you, you can't do certain things. I, I'm not encouraging people to just run out there and be reckless with your body, whether through sex or drugs. Use wisdom. Choose your friends wisely. And sometimes you need to just be by yourself. So this is just food for thought for today. And I hope you receive this in the spirit that I intended it to, to pose questions to you to make you think. I know I was asleep and I'm and part of me is still awakening. And one day I may come into full enlightenment. Yes. Start start meditating out there and, and going within. Because I I um I even though I bought a lot, a lot I have I think um close to a hundred books 
on all different subjects, on uh, uh, on different uh, occult stuff, uh, histories, and, and and about the universe and all things like that. But I got I was getting overwhelmed because it was just info, info. But it's someone else's info. But what I've been doing, on and off, I don't do it every day. But I've been meditating, and I tell you this: that things are going to start opening. Things you're going, you are personally going to be experiencing through the act of meditation, and without drugs. You don't even need drugs for it. You close your eyes, and you settle your mind, and you 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 stay like awake in, in wakefulness, and. Boom, you're going to start seeing things. Some people even start to hear things. Really watch and start asking yourself questions. Questions about your everyday, your activities that you always do. And it's like a dogma. You just do it because they say you're supposed to do this. And one of those examples are religion. Just start Question yourself. Become your own personal detective. And you're going to see that the narrative that you've been told is not accurate. And you're being purposely lied to. And, and you know, I'll go a step further. There's a thing called the Freedom of Information Act. FOIA, it's known. Start contacting different agencies. You know, I think the first thing you should do is contact your board of ed and say, I, I wish a, to request a copy of my school records, your, your elementary school records. Okay, some school records, they, they claim, oh, we can only hold on to them for 10 years. Like I went to my public school maybe two years ago, two, three years ago. And they said, oh, we, we don't keep them here. We only hold them for 10 years. And I forget what she said, whether she destroys them or throws them away. But no, they can't, they can't throw it away because that's data on you. The, 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 the government or people out there need to know, need to be able to control you. So they also control you through data information on you. They don't throw it out. They store it somewhere. So I recently put in a FOIA request on my uh, public school records. I requested from kindergarten or, you know, Head Start to the 12th grade. I said, I want any information on me as it pertains to uh, any uh, special classes that I, uh, special classes, special studies that was done on me, uh, my IQ, all that. I said, I want it all. Yeah. And I did get a response, out, I think, after two months, and the letter was kind of scathing, and they angrily said in the letter, at least, like, sometimes when you read something, you can read the sentiment of the person that's writing, and it wasn't very friendly. But they ultimately said, well, you need to call, uh, contact this law, this this person who's a lawyer. I guess they connected with the uh, Department of Education. And so I did that. And so I'm still waiting. And I did other FOIA requests that I don't really want to share right now. I, I did not get any definitive uh, information yet. But... When I do, I, want, I think I want to share with you guys, and I think I want to do another FOIA request. I want to do a FOIA request on something that I saw. I saw some, I, I want to know. Two things that I saw, and so I want to find out more about it. Yes, start using them. You pay your your tax dollars to hold this information and they're supposed to represent you and they're supposed to be public servants, right? Okay? So use that power. You know, ask respectfully in a letter, 
mail it certified return receipt so you have a documentation that you sent something and also always make copies of any letter or documentation you send out there okay so that's all that I uh, wish to say right now and I hope that you really take this to heart it's about self-empowerment rather than being controlled by outside forces okay so I thank you again for listening and peace and joy to you take care guys